Good afternoon, Buckley, and welcome to our very last assembly before spring break. Today, our assembly will recognize and celebrate Women's History Month with stories from Buckley alumni who graduated between 1954 and 2012, spanning almost 60 years of Buckley history. I am glad that we're taking the time to celebrate Women's History Month because it would be easy to forget that while we have come a long way, there are still too many gender-based inequities and cultural biases that we need to address. And that's why, as the father of three Buckley alumni myself, I am grateful that because of the role models that they had here and because of their education, all three of my daughters are confident that there is nothing that a man can do that they wouldn't be able to do. And I hope that's how all Buckley students feel. So thank you to Mrs. Jean-Paul for reaching out to our Buckley alumni community to continue to celebrate the leadership of women in our school, in our country, and in our world. I wish all of you a happy, safe, restful, and wonderful spring break. Danny Chu is gonna lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you. Assembly stand. Pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic of which it stands for one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Hello, I'm Susan Tidd Augenthaler and I graduated from Buckley in 1954. My brother, George Tidd, graduated in 1952. I have two boys, Tom and Keith. Tom graduated in 1978 and Keith gradu graduated in 1982. We are all very grateful for our Buckley education. Jamie Hale from the class of 1972. For the last five years, Jamie has been a clinical social worker at Vibra Hospital of Northern California. Prior to that, she worked for 20 years as a hospice and home health care professional. Jamie was recently awarded the 2020 Social Worker of the Year Award presented by the Northern California Gateway Chapter of Social Workers. Jamie loves her work at the hospital and feels a true sense of teamwork and collaboration with the entire medical team. We thank Jamie for all that she is doing, and her Buckley classmates from the class of 1972 are very proud of her, and so are we. Hello everyone, I'm so excited to be celebrating Women's History Month with you all. I graduated from Buckley just nine short years ago and graduated from college where I studied engineering in 2020. It is truly such an exciting time to be a student and to be a woman. Historically, laws and policies were set in place to keep women from freedoms that men were allowed. Everything from voting to equal pay. There are still many barriers, even today, that women face when trying to pursue their passions. One example of this is during the COVID-19 pandemic, many working moms are having to leave the workforce due to a lack of childcare. During the month of March, we specifically set aside time to listen and share the stories of countless women who have fought for our rights. It is important for us to recognize the achievements of women because it teaches us that everyone's capable of great things. With that, women are still not getting the recognition they deserve. One example of this happened around a year and a half ago when Forbes, a really large company, put out a list of America's most innovative leaders. There was only one woman on this list. We know that this is just not true. Some of my friends and I, in response, put together a book we call Wall of Wonder, and it highlights women from our college who we think are doing really amazing, innovative things in science, technology, and engineering. I'm gonna share one of these stories with you all. We have Danielle Breezy. She, in eighth grade, received a special visit from a chief meteorologist, the person that gives us our weather. And during this experience, she caught the weather bug. From this, Danielle ended up studying atmospheric sciences in college, the study of the weather and went on to become a meteorologist in states like Maryland, Oklahoma, Texas, and Massachusetts. When she ended up in Tennessee, she landed the chief meteorologist job for Nashville Station. This is a huge accomplishment because only 8% of chief meteorology jobs go to women. And she did it all by the young age of 31. 
Danielle also, in her free time, visits with local schools to share all the opportunity that there is in a career in science. I love Danielle's story, and I hope you all today talk to some of the women in your life to hear their stories. Happy Women's History Month. Hey, how's it going? My name is Courtney Emanuel, and I graduated from Buckley Country Day School back in 2010 almost over, or well over 10 years ago. I went from second grade to eighth grade and I absolutely loved it. I missed the food, I missed playing sports. I actually kind of missed the uniforms too. I absolutely love Buckley and I hope you're enjoying it as well. It, you know, time moves fast. So enjoy as much as possible at, at your time there. Um, I went to Hofstra University and I graduated back in 2018. I was a political science major. For the past four years, I've been a paralegal. I was a litigation and a mediation paralegal in a foreclosure firm. I now am a criminal court paralegal working with um, prosecutors for the New York County District Attorney's Office. And I aspire to be an attorney. I'm currently in the process of studying for my LSAT to be um, to be a law student next year, and I and I hope to be you know impactful to to this world and and make a difference. Someone that I look up to is no one no other than Vice President Kamala Harris. Uh, she was a prosecutor as well, and she made the, the necessary change within her community, not only to put away those that were affecting the community in a negative way, but to also reform the justice system. And that is my goal. I would like to 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 reform the justice system and and really fight the, the good fight to to end systematic racism. So that is what I that's what I aspire to do, and I think that Women History Month it should be celebrated because it's important to highlight the, the women in your lives that made a positive influence in your life as well as others. Um, so really celebrate and appreciate the women that fought that hard, long fight to get to where they are now. And you, will con and you should continue as well to get to wherever you want to go. Whatever you want to do in life, you can achieve it. Never ever give up and don't let anyone else tell you different. You can do it. So enjoy Women's History Month and I look forward to meeting you all one day when I will never ever turn back to Buckley. Take care. Hi everyone, I'm Darlena Liu and I'm Buckley class of 2009. My journey after Buckley led me to the Bronx High School of Science and then Phillips Academy Andover. I graduated from the University of Pennsylvania with a degree in biology and anthropology, and now I'm a fourth year medical student at the NYU School of Medicine. I'm going to be a child and adolescent psychiatrist, and I'm starting my residency training at Harvard Cambridge Health Alliance. And as a woman in healthcare, Women's History Month means so much to me because I think about all the progress that's been made over the years from 1849 when Dr. Elizabeth Blackwell became the first female physician in the United States to today when I look around and half my medical school class are women who are going to help change the field. It makes me so excited for the future and I hope to share some of my inspiration with the future generations, especially when it comes to children's mental health, which is why I wrote and published a children's book. It's called the Bailey Blues, and it teaches kids about depression through the story of my dog, Bailey. Besides this project, I've also been involved with Doctors Who Create, which is a podcast that I host and produce where I interview physicians who have found ways to integrate their creative hobbies with their professional careers. And I hope to be an inspiration for the generations to come and I encourage you all to look around because Buckley is such a great place to be creative. I know I had great experiences in woodshop and drama class and history and science and all those classes and I learned so much from my teachers and having that environment where I felt like I could be inspired and be creative. So I encourage you all to do that and I'm wishing you all a very very wonderful Women's History Month. 
Hi, my name is Kelsey Gibson. I graduated from Buckley in 2006. Then I went to Calumet Memorial High School where I graduated in 2010. Then I went to NYU where I graduated in 2014. Then I went to Johns Hopkins University where I graduated in 2015 with a master's in biotechnology. And now I'm currently a second year medical student at the Jacobs School of Medicine and Biomedical Sciences at the University at Buffalo, where I plan to graduate in 2023. To me, being a woman in medicine is an amazing feat and also a rewarding path. Um, Women's History Month is a, is a month where women get to show how far we've come and how we are leaders in all of our industries. Being a woman in medicine, especially a woman of color, um, it has shown me that I can be an advocate and a leader to all of my patients, no matter their gender or their, their race. And I have a seat at the table with, in, a, in a field that is predominantly men. Um, my current class is 53% women, which is the largest to this date, and is only growing from there. And I have, I've seen women in all types of fields of medicine, in surgery, in dermatology, ophthalmology, any sort of specialty that you can think of. Women are now a forefront and a leader in it. Um, I am proud to be a woman in medicine. I am, it was a hard, it was a hard and long battle to get here, but it was very rewarding. Um, but it's shown that women can be anything they choose to, that you choose to be. There is no limit to the greatness that women are. Uh, we are phenomenal people. Um, we are leaders. We are mothers. We are caregivers. We are everything that you could possibly think of. Um, and Buckley, for me, has been a huge foundation for that. So to everyone out there, happy Women's History Month, and uh, the sky is the limit, and pursue your dreams. My name's Hannah Phillips, and I graduated from Buckley in 2009. After graduating from Buckley, I attended Manhasset Public High School, where I graduated in 2013. After high school, I went to Duke University in North Carolina, where I majored in evolutionary anthropology and minored in both chemistry and biology. I also completed the pre-med track while there with the intention of going to medical school. However, after, after college, I had a little bit of a change of heart and I decided to become a teacher. I taught eighth grade math and science at a school in the Bronx through Teach for America. I also completed my master's in teaching during that time. After two years teaching, I fell back in love with medicine and I decided to apply to medical school. I now attend Renaissance School of Medicine at Stony Brook University out here on Long Island. I'm a second year student. I'm currently going through my clerkship rotations and I'm loving every second of it. I get to work in the hospital and learn from some of the most incredible doctors. Every Women's History Month, I really like to take time and reflect about a few things. First, I like to think about all the incredible women in my life who inspire me, and I like to think about what I can do to support and uplift them even more than I already do. I also like to think about the women who came before me, who paved the way for the opportunities that I have today. And lastly, I like to think about the girls and the women who are gonna come after me. I like to think about what I can do to create even more opportunity for them in the future. In my industry, medicine, it's really important to think about women because women play such a vital role, both as providers and as patients. Right now, more women are in medical school than ever before, and we actually make up the majority of students, which I think is really cool. Women also face really specific health issues that not everyone acknowledges, and there are a lot of disparities between the health of men and women. I like to think about these things during Women's History Month and see what I can do to break down those barriers and to support women who are my patients, who are my friends, who are my family and in my community. I'm really excited to see what the Buckley students in the future can also do for women. Hi Buckley, this is Amber Ashley Parker, Buckley Country Day School class of 2002. I hope everyone is feeling well and doing well and most importantly, I wanna wish everyone a happy Women's History Month. It's been quite some time since I've graduated from Buckley and just thinking about how long ago it was and even thinking about to the first days I went to Buckley as a pre k -er, it's so good to speak with you guys during such an important month. 
So after graduating from Buckley in 2002, I had continued on to Friends Academy right over in Locust Valley, Long Island. I completed high school at Friends and I graduated in 2006. Immediately after completing high school, I went off to college at the University of Pennsylvania. Some people call it UPenn. Um, and I graduated in 2011 and received my bachelor's in health and societies with a concentration in bioethics and also completed two minors, one in classical studies because I love Latin so much. Thanks a lot, Buckley. It stayed with me for life. And the second minor was a university minor between my home school, the College of Arts and Sciences, and the Wharton School of Business at Penn, and that was in healthcare management and the biological basis of behavior. After completing my undergraduate degree, I just recently, in December of 2020, so I guess that makes me the class of 2020, um, completed my master's from the Perlman School of Medicine or the University of Pennsylvania School of Medicine or medical school, what have you. Um, and that particular degree was in the master's of bioethics, so that, and I say bioethics a lot. If you're not sure what that is, that's okay. That is the ethical practice of biomedicine or clinical medicine and research. So I make sure we're always doing things that are principled and that are going to help us and not unnecessarily hurt us. So that's essentially what I'm educated to do and what I have devoted my life to doing. In terms of my career, um, I am currently at the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia. I work in their Office of Research Compliance, so I am responsible for all of the research studies that happen at CHOP, which is the number one pediatrics uh, hospital in the world. And so it's really cool to be able to see all the different kinds of research we do but also be able to consult and provide guidance on how to ensure that studies are compliant and are conducting sound and legal and ethical research. Um, before that, I had had my first post-baccalaureate or adult job immediately after graduating in 2011. I had worked for the University of Pennsylvania at their medical school the entire time. I was conducting research, I was coordinating research, I was managing research, I was an investigator, I was published. So I was living still a very academically geared life in the clinical sciences even after graduation, which was so cool because that kept me on track and that's what propelled me forward to actually pursue my medical degree. So I guess the cherry on this academic and professional Sunday is that I am attending medical school starting this fall, so September 2021, at the St. James School of Medicine. So I will soon be a physician, a doctor, um, and I should be graduating in the year of 2025. So wish me luck. I'm really excited. And everything that has happened up until this point has been been working for this, for this. And I look forward to getting started this fall. Um, you know, in, in saying all these things and, 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 you know, starting at Buckley and talking about all my achievements through life, it's, it's really hard not to talk about Women's History Month because I wouldn't have been able to achieve these things if we didn't have historical women, if we didn't have people who understood how to problem solve. Women's History Month is important because it provides a blueprint and guidance for anyone regardless of their gender, boy or girl, man or woman, regardless of that, you know how to problem solve based on the way that women throughout history have tackled these really difficult questions of liberty, of equity, all these things, and being firsts. Buckley is great at educating leaders, and I'm so glad I went because I have great friends, boys and girls for the rest of my life, who are great problem solvers and who learn from men and women alike. So Women's History Month is also important for us because it provides us with other examples of these innovators, these collaborators, people to celebrate, and gives us a great model to look over. And one woman in particular that's really important to me is my grandmother, Phyllis Hill Slater. If you're serious about small business or if you're a serious women business owner, you know her. 
Um, she's one of the foremost advocates for small business and women business owners on Long Island, in New York State, throughout the nation, and on this planet. So one of the things I wanted to share was a little snippet about what she's achieved and how that's even impacted my own business, A Game Solutions, and its success and my ability to provide you know, opportunities for myself and other people because of what my grandmother did in the past. So here it is. Miss Hill Slater, Phyllis, my grandmother, is responsible for permanently changing the business ownership landscape in America via her involvement in the comp composition and passage of the Women Business Owners Act, H.R. 5050, which was signed into law by President Ronald Reagan in 1988. H.R. 5050 eradicated state laws requiring women to have male relatives to co-sign business loans and established the National Women's Business Council, NWBC, the Women's Business Center, and the Office of Women's Business Ownership. Ms. Hill Slater was one of 11 women selected to testify at the congressional hearings before the banking subcommittee. It was her testimony that catapulted the bill through the House and has forever changed the way women are allowed to do business in this country. A trailblazer, leader, and catalyst of change, Phyllis Hill Slater, my grandma. So, guys, if you have not identified a woman figure yet, that's okay. You have plenty of time to research, learn, because when women win, we all win. And just because we're celebrating in a month doesn't mean you can't learn every day and celebrate yourself every day. Thanks so much, Buckley. So good to speak with you and happen, happy Women's History Month. Bye for now. Hi everyone, my name is Leslie Perez and I am a graduate of Buckley Country Day School from 1984. And I have to say, Buckley is and always will be a magical place. For me personally, I entered into the television industry over 20 years ago. I wanted to be a producer, I wanted to tell stories, and I wanted to meet interesting people. But more importantly, I decided at a very early age to align myself with really strong, smart, powerful women. These women became my mentors. They taught me how to work hard. They taught me how to reach my goals. They gave me a totally new skill set, and they also taught me not to be afraid to make mistakes along the way. I think that in honor of Women's History Month, it's so important to align yourself with really strong female mentors. I've also been so fortunate to work with some of the most prolific, influential women in the TV industry, Oprah, Martha Stewart, Meredith Vieira. I feel so incredibly fortunate, but more importantly, I followed my passion, which is what I give to every person in my office, I always say to them, don't be afraid to work hard, ask as many questions, be over prepared. But the most important thing is that if you love what you do, you will thrive. My name is Nina Riccardi and I graduated from Buckley Country Day School in 1975. And all my teachers were women at Buckley and some of those foundational experiences I had from Buckley are still with me now. In fact, some of the theater experiences I had at Buckley are still with me now because as a clinical social worker, I am part of a group of therapists who do improv out here. So I thank Buckley for so many things, but I thank them mostly for helping me realize that I was a ham from a very early age. So today I wanna to talk to you a little bit about a very strong female boss that I had many years ago. Maureen Kelly was my director at Cathedral Counseling Center, a mental health agency here in Chicago. The reason Maureen was a good leader was because she was authentic. And she also was incredibly compassionate in any message she would have to deliver to us. And she also trusted that we were sturdy enough to hear the truth about things. She was creative. We would listen to poems at the beginning of all our staff meetings. There was a lot of reading that went on amongst the staff. We would often use books as part of treatment, some fiction and nonfiction for our patients. And we talked a lot about the importance of metaphor in our work as therapists. So I loved the fact that Maureen was expansive in her thinking, very genuine in her presentation and incredibly invested in her staff. 
So my hat goes off to her. I would not be where I am today professionally without Maureen Kelly. She was a powerful female leader and I am grateful. Hi, my name is Liz Schnelzer and I graduated from Buckley Country Day School in 1983. After Buckley, I went to Friends Academy. And after Friends Academy, I went to Cornell where I studied anthropology. Uh, while there, I um, did research on uh, animal behavior, specifically with the ruffed lemur and with apes in captivity, which is what I wrote my thesis on. Um, after graduating from Cornell in 91, I moved out to Los Angeles and was hired by an engineering firm for my re research experience. Um, I worked there as a research associate, and that company was called Failure Analysis Associates. So yes, I worked for a company called Failure. And while at Failure, um, I worked with uh, professional engineers who would analyze um, failures that happen throughout various industries, things like um, exploding bean cookers at Taco Bell, champagne corks that took out somebody's eye, um, various machinery malfunctions, airplane crashes, the Exxon Valdez. And one day I was working on a, um, on a machinery malfunction um, where someone had removed the guards to a cupcake wrapping machine and in, uh, an immigrant woman lost half of her hand as the blade came across and, and sliced it. And so um, at that point I realized that even though I was working in engineering at a company that I really loved doing important work, I was working on the wrong side of the equation and instead I really wanted to be working with the people end of the, the equation. At that point I um, left failure and I got my master's degree in social work at the University of Southern California. Uh, after graduating I moved to Northern Virginia and worked for um, our large healthcare provider here at a place called the Enola Keller Center with kids who um, were having difficulty with anxiety, depression, school refusal, anger management. Um, after that, I um, took some time off um, to raise my kids. I have three children. And while I was raising my kids, I ran a community service program that reached out four times a year sending hundreds of volunteers into uh, various parts of Northern Virginia and Washington, D.C. to volunteer. Um, and then it came time for me to decide that I wanted to open my own private practice. And so I did that now about a decade ago. Uh, it's called Euphringo Counseling. And I see um, adults and adolescents who are struggling with depression, anxiety. I have a subspecialty in grief and bereavement. So I help people who've lost others, um, lost people dear to them. And um, I do some work with dreams. Um, I do some work with um, life transitions. And I love my job. If anyone wants to talk to me about it, any piece of that adventure, please feel free to reach out. Take care. Hi, everyone. My name is Caitlin Gibson. I graduated from Buckley in 2002, then went on to graduate from Kellenberg Memorial High School in 2006 and then graduated from New York University in 2010 with a degree in politics. I currently work in the fashion industry, which I know is a deviation from politics, but this has been such a fun and rewarding career path. And I'm very excited to talk to you guys about Women's History Month and what it means for us in the fashion industry. I currently work as the Associate Director of Client Services Operations at a company called The Real Real. The Real Real is a luxury e-commerce consignment business where we sell previously owned high-end goods. Our CEO is a woman. Our co-founder and president is a woman. We're happy to have a lot of really great and influential women as our board of directors. And as a company, being part of a company that is led by women has been very rewarding because we no longer are looking for a seat at the table. We've created the table. And in turn, we're creating other seats for other men and women to be able to join us as we continue to rise in this industry. Fashion in general has always been a very interesting field and, and place for women. A lot of women are models, a lot of women are creative directors, a lot of women are heads of companies like at The Real Real. And there has been a really great diversity in terms of making sure that there is representation not only for the women to wear the garments that we are producing, but also to be behind the scenes and making sure that women have a voice and continue to have a seat at the table. Buckley has been such an instrumental part of my career path. It's given me the foundation to understand how to learn, understand how to study, and even at most be kind to people. And I really take that with me. So very excited to celebrate Women's History Month with everybody.
continue to grow, continue to reach for the stars, continue to pursue whatever career path that you want, even if you graduate with a degree in politics and end up studying fashion. Whatever you wanna do, there is an avenue for you. So keep shining. There is no limitation on your growth and excellence and have a really great and happy Women's History Month. Hi, I'm Marjorie Gengler Smith, the class of 1965 from Buckley. Then after Buckley, I went to the Bishop School in La Jolla, California. And then I graduated from Princeton, class of 1973. And we were the first class of women. And I happened to be the first woman in Princeton's history that won an athletic competition. Um, and now this is my sister, Louise. <laughs> Louise Gengler Thomas, and I am the class of 1967 at Buckley, went on to uh, the Bishop School, and then on to Princeton, uh, where I played tennis there. But um, I made a career in coaching athletics so I was the Princeton women's tennis coach for 25 years and had the amazing opportunity to work with the most wonderful women um, who have gone on to do all sorts of things from doctors and lawyers to supporting not-for-profit organizations. And I'm just very proud to have been able to work with these women and see them grow through their college years. And we are indebted to Buckley for giving us a great start and to yes. our mother who encouraged us as women to be involved in sports. And she was the Buckley class of 1933. This is her plaque and it's in the main hall at Buckley. We hear it's famous. It is and people want to know. So this is the name of the donkey is Dennis <laughs> and she rode Dennis to Buckley. It was a different location. <laughs> But she was certainly a very strong women, woman, and um, we certainly learned a lot from her. And we have three younger sisters that went to Princeton, I mean, whoops, went to Buckley, Buckley. <laughs> and um, as well as two brothers. But um, we're happy to celebrate Women's History yes. Month. And thank you, Buckley. Thank you. Hey everyone, I'm Alana Stein, Buckley class of 2008, a proud member of the red team and, and everything Buckley. After Buckley, I went to Friends Academy, uh, followed by Bucknell University's School of Business. And now, a few years after graduating, I work in the financial technology industry, a historically male dominant industry that I uh, am one of very few women on my team. So. For me, in this industry in particular, women's history and roles means leveraging the pathways open for me by those who came before me and really optimizing them for those who will come after me, like each and every one of you. Women's history to me is really not just history. Uh, it's the past, of course, but it's also the present and the future. We all have a role in this world to make it the best it can be for men and women alike. And I hope that I can help set pathways for you all, just like you will help set pathways for those who come after you. Good luck, thanks.